I've stacked 30 Panzer Divisions in Berlin with a little train going back and forth between different cities just to prove a point about logistics. And that point is that even a good player of Hearts of Iron 4 can sometimes screw up supply. So let's go over the checklist of things we can do to fix supply when supply is bad. Welcome everyone to another episode of Counterfactual Gaming. And today we are going to look at supply and talk about all the little things we can do to make supply better in the game. Now, supply is one of those issues, as you can see from the supply map right here, where it's usually feast or famine. We got plenty of good supply up here in the north, whereas down here in the southern front, we are facing severe supply problems in part because I poorly optimized Romania's supply network, and also because my panzers are pushing so quickly to Kiev, they've outstripped my ability to convert railways. Now, supply is very important in the game, and if you don't understand how important supply is, let's just take this example of a Soviet counterattack against Kleist's armored corps. Now, Meritskov here is using an infantry division to try and stop this panzer division in a counterattack. We all know it's going to fail. But this Panzer Division is taking a significant number of penalties because it is in very poor supply. It currently has enough fuel, but regardless of whether it has enough fuel, its supply status is absolutely abysmal, resulting in horrible penalties to attack. I mean, and the attack value is why you want to have Panzer Divisions in the first place. They're really good at concentrating that attack value. So having poor supply is causing the divisions that Kleist is using here, who are all supposed to be at the tip of the spear, to perform worse. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the bad supply checklist, which has 10 items on it. You can only see 8 because I couldn't fit 10 onto the flacker. Let's not worry about that right now. First item on the bad supply checklist, do you have enough trains and trucks? If we take a look here at the logistics fulfillment tooltip, it will tell you whether you have enough trains and trucks. It's very simple, easy to read, but this always requires a little bit of planning ahead. You want to be producing trains basically from day one, so you can keep ahead of your logistics need. Notice that my current logistics need is 172 trains and 1,020 trucks. That is for the current situation in this opening stage of Barbarossa. The bigger my supply network gets, the more trains I'm going to need, and the more trucks I start losing to attrition, the more I'm going to need to replace them. So if you have supply problems, make sure that you're meeting this need first. If there's something wrong here with logistics fulfillment, you're going to have to fix this before you can fix any other supply problem, because supply is literally not going to be able to reach your divisions if you're short trains and trucks. Item two, do you have too many divisions on a single tile? Now I showed this earlier in the introduction with Panzer Divisions, but we're gonna take a look at it again with Infantry Divisions. You can see I have 132, 16 with pure Infantry Divisions sitting in Berlin, and you can see that they're facing some supply issues. The supply issues are not as severe as having the Panzer Divisions because this particular template has a much lower supply footprint, but you cannot Ever just stack an infinite number of divisions on a single tile. Berlin is the supply capital for Germany. That is the place from which all supply originates. Germany should not be able to have better supply anywhere else in the entire country, but even Berlin has a finite amount of supply capacity per tile. If I take this stack of divisions and move it over there, and if I take this stack of divisions and move them over here, and take this stack of divisions and move them over here. Once I've moved those divisions to other tiles, you will notice that my bad supply status has been cured. Nothing has changed with my hubs, nothing has changed with my trains or my trucks, generals, supply companies, army spirits or anything. Just moving divisions to other tiles solved my supply bottleneck in Berlin. Checklist item number three, are you near a supply hub? You actually need to be within a certain distance of a supply hub, even with motorized supply, 
before you can benefit from the presence of a supply hub. Now to illustrate this point, I have tag swapped over to Finland. And I've given the Finns as many trucks as they could ever possibly need, and I've motorized their supply. And what you will notice is that Finnish divisions are still in terrible supply. Look at that supply status of 9%. Because these Finnish divisions are nowhere near a supply hub. They've got a supply hub here. It's the closest one they've got. But even with motorized supply, they are so far away from their supply hub, the supply hub might as well not exist. In certain theaters, this will be your biggest hurdle to supply. Not trucks, not trains, not templates, just not being near a supply hub. And you will want to work on fixing that problem if possible. If not, you may need to take other measures such as air supply or using commando generals in order to mitigate the effects of terrible supply. It also helps to quickly take enemy supply hubs and connect them up to your own supply hub when possible. Number four, does the supply hub actually have enough capacity? Supply hubs have a finite capacity. And to illustrate this point, we're going to use this supply hub here. This supply hub in Pinsk is overloaded because it is trying to supply too many divisions. It's not that there are too many divisions per tile. This supply hub cannot supply more than 20 supply per area. And I've moved the entire German Panzer arm here, so it's going to have some difficulty doing that. Now, yes, there are some other issues that are making it difficult to get supply in this area. While there are a wide variety of reasons why this supply hub is overloaded, as you can see here for the tooltip, it's trying to supply 22 supply worth of units with only a throughput of 20. This supply hub is not up to the task of keeping these divisions supplied. I need to move those divisions to other locations if I want to maintain a solid supply status in this area consistently. Or I need to take more supply hubs ahead, like say seizing Minsk, in order to relieve the supply burden here in Pinsk. Number five, logistics support companies. Are you using them? Now using logistics support companies really should go without saying, but I want to highlight how important and how much of an impact they have on the game by just looking in the division designer and looking at the tech for a second. Okay, I have a Panzer division here. It's not a very good Panzer division, but I have a Panzer division here that is currently using X amount of supply. If I, but if I remove that sub logistic supply company, you notice the tooltip goes from 2.34 to 2.93. That's a significant change in supply use. And in this save, that's only log two. You even have Logistics 3 and Logistics Company 4. So as you progress in tech, your logistics supply companies get better and better. And let's make sure we understand something about logistics supply companies. They don't just reduce the supply footprint of a division, how much supply it draws from a hub. They also reduce fuel usage. If we go look at that Panzer division again, you'll notice that the fuel usage there is 3285. But if I'm going to remove that logistics support company, fuel usage jumps to 36.5. That is not an insignificant amount of fuel usage. In this case, we're not necessarily worried about drawing on Germany's overall fuel stockpiles here. We're concerned primarily with local fuel because Lower fuel consumption, while keeping fuel capacity the same, means that the division can fight longer or drive further on the same tank of gas before it requires a refuel. Checklist item number six. Is your field marshal a logistics wizard? For the purposes of this video, I'm having Steiner as my field marshal, just because he's a meme, but also because I was able to level him up quickly to get the logistics wizard trait, but we need to talk about what I mean by logistics wizard. The logistics wizard is a field marshal trait, not a general trait, a field marshal trait that gives you a supply consumption reduction of 15% and also access to the extra supplies command power function, which obviously Germany could not possibly afford right now, but it does provide a lot of supply grace if you want that sort of thing. Now, in order to get the Logistics Wizard trait, you have to have a Field Marshal with Organizer on them. 
which is not my favorite trait, but it does lead to some decent stuff over here. In order to get Organizer, you probably need to farm your Generals with Planning Bonus to get the Organizer trait to unlock Logistics Wizard. This is why the Spanish Civil War is so important for the Soviets and the Germans, because, yeah, you can farm Panzer Leaders. Hey, that's great. Yeah, you can farm Infantry Leaders. That's useful. But if you really care about your supply situation, you want to farm organizers so you can promote them to field marshal and give them the logistics wizard trait. Now, just to give you an idea of how important a logistics wizard is, here is an infantry division under Felix Steiner's command on the front, even as we speak. And if we look at the supply use tooltip of this infantry division, you'll notice I have logistics companies in there. That's that supply usage reduction, which gives the division a base supply use of 0 0.6. That seems pretty light, but if we stack Steiner on there with the Butterfront and a General and Steiner's other bonus, because Steiner isn't just a logistics wizard. Remember, Steiner also has skill two is in logistics and on top of his logistics wizard bonus, which means that this division gets further supply reductions on top of what its template provides. If I take this division out of Steiner's command for a second, you'll notice it's only benefiting from the butter front now. And you'll notice it now is a supply draw, draw of 0 0.57 compared to 0 0.41. That is a significant percentage drop, but how much does that actually matter in real life? So back of the envelope calculations tell me that between a general, a field marshal with logistics skill of two, and a logistics wizard, we could fit roughly 39% more divisions per hub, supply hub, or tile than if we just had garbage generals and field marshals that don't have good skills or traits. Number seven, can we increase infrastructure? Infrastructure, as you can tell, has an impact on the supply you can get on any particular tile. As we can see from this tooltip, the supply that we can get on tiles is somewhat regulated by infrastructure. Now, just to be clear, infrastructure can be damaged by combat. So this isn't just a case of, I need to build more infrastructure. In some cases, we need to repair infrastructure. As you can see here, this is a three infrastructure state, but it has been heavily damaged in fighting. So. If I go through and use the instant construction cheat to raise infrastructure to uh, 100% and, and if we take a look at the supply situation now, you will notice that upgrading the infrastructure and repairing it has improved supply in the area. Now, it hasn't actually completely fixed the supply issues on that tile because I still have too many divisions stacked here, but fixing the infrastructure and improving the infrastructure has actually moved the needle on supply. So that is something you need to keep in mind if you're facing severe supply problems. Item number eight, can you increase rails? Now, as I just said, fixing the infrastructure here in this area and upgrading it improves supply, but did not completely solve our supply problems. It's a little hard to read this tool tip, but we are still trying to draw too much supply from the supply hub in Pinsk. How can we make that better? Well. The way we're going to make that better is we're going to have to improve the railways. Now, we have not seized Minsk or the railways here. So in order to improve our supply hub capacity here, we are going to need to upgrade railways leading to the supply hub. Now, this is the part I always like to call Railway Tycoon in Hearts of Iron 4 because you kind of need to be a little bit of a railway tycoon in order to make the game do what you want to do. Now you'll notice that we had only level two railways in some of these places. So the first thing I'm going to do is upgrade these railways to level three and we're going to see if that fixes our supply problem. I have the instant construction sheet turned on. You'll notice the capacity for the supply hub has increased. We are still not quite where we need to be, but it's certainly gotten better. 
But if we want to really make the supply system work even better, we're going to have to go to level four. So what I'm going to do is go through and we're going to make level four railways all the way to the supply capital, which is here. Now, there's a couple of other ways we could fiddle with railways. This is not a tutorial on railway building. I'm just going to upgrade the railways to level four. We're going to run it with the engine construction sheet. And all right. Now, you think I've upgraded it correctly, but the tooltip is telling me I still have a bottleneck. I still have a level three railway I did not upgrade. So let's go take a look back at the map. Okay, I've. Level four, level four. Oh, you see what happened here? I did level four, level four. I missed one. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. All right, now that's level four. The tooltip has corrected my bad behavior. Upgrading to proper level four railways all the way from this supply hub to Berlin gives this supply hub a capacity of 30, which is now enough to fully supply all the units in the area. Number nine. Can we use the Grand Battle Plan Logistics Focus Army Spirit? Now, this is a Grand Battle Plan specific thing you can do to make your life better. If we go over here, tag to Britain for a second, and you'll notice Britain is having fuel issues, but that's because it's under AI control. Don't mind that. If we go over here to Spirit of Division Command, for 50 Army XP, I can do Logistical Focus, which reduces supply consumption by 5%. Navy fuel consumption by 5% and air fuel consumption by 5%, as well as having a bonus to well-planned attack tactic selection chance, if it's the preferred a tactic, which we don't care about right now. That supply consumption reduction is what we're looking for. It's 5%, which makes it roughly equal to the butter front from Denmark, that tooltip we saw earlier that Germany has. This applies to any country that uses grand battle plan i know a lot of players don't like grand battle plan but this is one of the benefits of it as just a side note reducing air fuel consumption is helpful for any major power that has an air force regardless of whether your land units have supply or not and number 10 can we use bonuses from mass mobilization in order to improve our supply situation the answer is yes, but there's actually a lot of goodies here in the mass assault tree in general. Before you even get to the mass mobilization option, we have pocket defense, which gives us non-combat out of supply penalties and a supply grace boost, both of which are nice to have. If we go the mass mobilization route, I want you to notice that People's Army has division attrition as a modifier right there. That may not seem supply related, but I want everyone to remember that when units have really bad supply, especially in some kind of bad weather or they're attacking or defending or doing other, they're trying to like move under their own power, not strategic redeployment, they can take attrition. So this will help offset those kinds of problems, even though it's not directly a supply bonus. But you've also got all the way down here, more non-combat out of supply penalties here in Guerrilla Warfare at the very end of the tree. Those who play multiplayer a lot know why the Guerrilla Tactics part is useful. If we swap over to D-Battle, though, we also get some supply benefits, including a supply consumption reduction here at Large Front Operations. And another one here at Vast Offensives. Again, those are two supply consumption reductions. On the deep battle side, that's like adding another level to logistics support company to your divisions on top of maybe already using logistics support companies or other bonuses. This means that when you're looking at mass assault as a doctrine, deep battle has the obvious supply consumption reductions, which are really good to have, but mass mobilization also has a couple of goodies in there for those who are looking to make their supply situation more bearable. And that about wraps up our discussion for today. I hope that this video has actually been really helpful to you. Supply is one of those things that I consider to be absolutely vital to winning the war in Hearts of Iron 4. As you can see here, my Panzers, now that they're in proper supply, they're just wiping out the Soviets with hardly any effort. It's like the Soviets aren't even there as we push forward. The only thing that's going to stop these guys is right here, 
now when they get back into bad supply because we have not converted the railways that lead to Vitebsk. So thank you for joining me today. If you liked what you saw here, go ahead and throw a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm always talking about Hearts of Iron and other Paradox games. Not sure what I'm going to be doing next, although some folks wanted me to talk about suppressing partisans with tanks. We'll see what we can accomplish there. But until then, I hope you all are having a pleasant day, and I'll see you later.